Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Man, this one's gonna be cool because my boy, shout out to Kura Mayo over there. Yo, ancient history or annals of Kentucky with a survey of the ancient monuments, y'all, of North America. And this is a tabular view of the principal languages and primitive nations of the whole earth. And this is gonna be by C.S. Rafineske, A.M. Ph.D. Okay, and then he's going to be a professor in the uh, university. Okay, he's got his uh, whole bunch of accolades right here. You dig? This is going to be in 1824, y'all, according to the uh, Scalagerian timeline. All right. Remember, this chronology is all uh, messed up, mumble jumbled. We've gone over Fomenko. If you haven't gone over Fomenko, maybe you need to um, to understand that our chronology is totally messed up, y'all. Uh, don't give so much credence to it. Um, there are some things that, um, you know, you just got to analyze. And once you start to understand, you don't take certain dates to be completely uh, valid. Now, something that's pretty cool here is the ethnological and philological table of the primitive nations and languages, right? So we have <clears throat> the words heaven, land, and water, and man have been selected to form this table, okay? And we can see the similarities in between uh, these, such as um, the primitive nations and languages of America itself, uh, roots of heaven, roots of land, roots of water, and roots of man, okay? Um, what's cool is that this is separated out um, by clear and distinct lineages, bloodlines, sections. Um, let's check it out. So here what we can see is primitive nations or languages of America. We have the eastern branch, okay? And this eastern branch, uh, Atalan or Kutan, okay? Pogonchian. Cherokee, Arwak, or Antillian, or Antelan, okay, heard of that one, huh, Arwak, Caribbean, of course, Tamanac, okay, Guarani, okay, Brazilian, Muiscas, okay, and Aracanians, and then the Peruvians, now this is Eastern Branch, okay, including the root words for heaven, uh, we already know El, uh, land, water, and man, Ha, for water, Haya, okay, then we have, look at what we got here though. We got an Eastern branch up here, but then we got the Asiatic or Western branch. So included within this Asiatic or Western branch, we have the Mexicans, uh-oh, Mexica, Misarians or Omans, okay, Minetaria, okay, Floridian, uh-oh, Asiatic or Western branch, Chacta, uh-oh, Chacta in there. So we got the Panis or Apachians, the Lenape, the Shawani, Mengui, the Skorora, and the Garalit, okay? And this is all within the Asiatic or Western branch, all right? So then we have the European languages and nations. European, okay? European languages and nations. It doesn't even give a, a branch for this one. So we got the Pelasgian. And who are the Pelasgians, okay? These are the original branch of your Phoenicians, okay? Um, this is clear as day, and um, these Pel the Pelasgians actually are a branch of uh, the Hamitic tribe, okay? Then we have the Cantabrians, the Celtic, Irish, Provincial, Gothic, and Scythians, Teutonic, we got the Samaritan, we got the Russians underneath the Samaritan, and then the Chudish, okay? Then we come down to the Asiatic primitive nations, okay? And this is Iranic or Western, okay? So we have Aramic. Zend or Persian, Caspian, Armenian, Abasian, okay, Caucasian, okay, Sanserit, okay. Then look at what we got here, number two of the Asiatic primitive nations. Tartarian or Northern. So Agurian, Mogulian, Dunguzian, Oziatic, Oz, Ostiak, Koryak, Anu, okay, Anu. Okay, we've heard of Anu, okay, Karelian, Nippon, or Japan, or Ayapan, okay, we've gone over Japan before, okay, now within this section three of the Chinese or Eastern, we got Tibetan, Chinese, Burman, Avanese, okay, and then look at what we got here, the Polynesian nations and radical languages, Igolote, with an asterisk beside it, or Papuan, okay, then we got the Malays, the Dagalan, okay, 
And then we have African primitive nations and radical languages. Now, I want you still to pay attention to this igolote, okay, with the asterisk. We're going to go over that in just a second. Now, we've got the African and primitive nations and radical languages. One, brown nations. Egyptian or Coptic. Watch out. Atlantic or Berber. Atlantic or Berber. Atlantic or Berber. Okay. Atlantic or Berber. Guan, Chian, Abyssinian. Danakil, Dana, Danal. Okay. Dana. Okay. That's the tribe of Dan. Gafer, and then the Hottentot. Okay. Hottentot. Okay. Then we got the Black or Negro nations. Uh oh. Changing it up. So we got the Nubian, Sudan, Gala, Gorko, Malimba, okay? Now, again, to this asterisk that I was talking about in relation to the Igolote, Igolote or Papuan. This is a primitive black or Negro nation of Asia, of Asia, of Asia. Fragments of which are found on that continent and throughout Polynesia, but these Igalote or Papuans are the primitive black or negro nation of Asia. Let it be known, before all the pale skin, yellow skin, they account to it. They already say this. Okay, so we're going to go through this, y'all. Let's dive into this bad boy and see how deep we can really get in relation to what is really going on. Um, and Of course, we're going to dodge a hijack in a lot of the things that we're finding. But I think this is pretty cool that we can go in here and start relating some of the more deeper things in relation to Kentucky itself. Now, every complete history of a country ought to include an account of the physical changes and revolutions which it may have undergone. Now, of course, these documents of such a geological survey are to be found in everywhere in the bowels of the earth, its rocks and strata. Of course, y'all. The soil of the Kentucky shows, like many other countries, that it had once been a bed of sea. Do you hear me? The soil of Kentucky, y'all, used to be once a bed of the sea. In James's map of the primitive ocean, it is supposed to have been covered North America by having a formal level of 6,000 feet above the actual level. Since the highest lands in Kentucky do not exceed 1,800 feet above the level of the actual ocean, they were once covered with at least 4,200 feet of water. I know it's hard for y'all to imagine this, but when we think of the old times, you cannot think of our past, the ever moment of now, ever changing, as being the same as it is currently at this point and moment in time in relation to the moment of now. The study of the soil of Kentucky proves evidently the successive and gradual retreat of the salt waters without evincing any proofs of a very violent or sudden disruptions or immersions of land nor eruptions of the ocean except some casual accidents easily ascribed to let's say earthquakes uh, salsays and some marine volcanoes now there are no remains of land or burning volcanoes in kentucky nor any considerable freshwater lake all of the strata are nearly horizontal with valleys excavated by the tides and streams during the soft state of the strata itself now after these preliminary observations we're going to detail the successive evolution of the soil and its productions under six distinct periods of time which may be compared to the six epochs or days of creation and supposed to have lasted an indefinite number of ages okay now the ages that we've spoken of again go over a bird's eye view okay we're getting up high now we in the sky looking at the understand or understanding and comprehending or understanding the aspect that we live we are currently in a moment of where our sun and moon are circling above and we will move on to the next age or cycle um as the ever moment of now continues on now of course <clears throat> in the first period which is just an in uh, general indentation inundation uh, is that here of course quote in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the spirit of God was moving over the waters unquote so this Brinney Ocean covers the whole land of Kentucky and the United States rising above 4,000 feet of the Cumberland or Wasioto Mountains and 5,000 feet over the limestone region near Lexington now the Oregon and Mexican mountains alone rise above the waters in North America gradual decrease of the ocean by the decomposition and consolidation of the water in the formations of rocks and deposit and um, 
deposition or deposition of strata. Now, the rate of this decrease can only be conjectured and is rather immaterial. The ocean subsides to 3,000 feet. Now, as we're going through here, um, he's kind of diving into the understanding of the creation of the sea animals, fishes, shells, polyps, etc., uh, in this first period. Now, in the second period, we have the immersion of the mountains, such as the Cumberland or Wasioto Mountains, emerge from the sea, which sinks to the level of 1,500 feet above its actual level and form a peninsula attached to the Alagani Island or mountain. And this is important because important because when we speak of who the mound builders are, it's going to relate big time to the Alagans or the Alagane or the Alegawi, okay, and we'll go into that. Um, now, the Shitose forms, formations proceed underwater, okay. Now, in the second period, we have grass and reeds grow, vegetation begins, springs appear, streams begin to flow, and gradually increase in lengths as the land extends, but decrease in depth and bulk by the excavation of valleys. Now, in this third period, we have the immersion of table lands. Now, the further diminution of the sea till its level is reduced to about 1,100 feet above the actual level, and all of the table lands and highlands of Kentucky become uncovered. Okay, guys? Now, another inland sea fills the actual Cumberland Basin, bounded, um, bounded north by the Green River Knobs, south by the Cumberland Mountains, and open to the west. So we have Green River forms its valleys, etc. All these streams and their branches excavate deep valleys. The Kentucky River falls into the limestone sea below the Red River. Okay? Now, of course, we have sea animals still in the limestone sea and in the, um, of course, they're embedded in the, in the limestone schist. Now, the creation of land animals, instincts, reptiles, birds, and quadruplets on the dry land. Vegetation increases and a thin soil is formed. Trees and shrubs begin to glow, grow, and form forests. They succeed in mosses, reeds, grasses, and maritime plants produced in the second period. Now, of course, this is all going in relation to the biblical aspect of creation. And it's pretty cool that they're relating it uh, to Kentucky and doing the geology <clears throat> of Kentucky itself to relate these as well. So as we go, we have the creation of mankind in Eden, uh, which to his aspect is in the highlands of Asia. Which Asia are we talking about? Are we talking about Asia Superior, Asia Minor? What, what we got going on here? So Adam or Admo or Adimo, the first man, and Eve or Eva, the life, are the parents of the primitive and antediluvian nation called the Adamites. Now that's amazing because we already know that there are Adamites and pre-Adamites. So if we have, you know, the first man, as they say, you know, why does it have to come from the Adamites when we know that there were pre-Adamites? So, anyways, this fourth period of Kentucky and history answers, therefore, to the sixth day or period of the general creation. The first and second periods of creation having produced the light, sun, stars, planets, uh, or wandering stars, and the earth or plain with her primitive crystallized mountains rising from 10,000 to 30,000 feet above the actual ocean besides the burning volcanoes, etc. So, of course, we have in the fifth period Noah's flood, which is the great flood of Noah, Nu, Menu, or Nahu, and the eastern continent, okay, which he's thinking may have reached the Americas, uh, but has not left. In now, this is, of course, history in 1824, but again, we're just taking what his depiction is, um, his understanding at this moment, okay? The great northern inland sea of North America, included in all the Great Lakes, the Mississippi, and the Gulf of the St. Lawrence, is gradually drained. Okay, we have the Gulf Stream of Mexico deposits the alluvial ground, reaching from Louisiana to New York, okay? And we have stratas begin to consolidate. Now, in this sixth period, we have Peleg's Flood. Okay, and this doesn't get mentioned much in relation to Peleg's flood. It's always Noah's, but not a lot of mention to Peleg's flood. Now, the great volcanic eruptions of the sea in Europe, America, etc., with awful earthquakes convulsing the Atlantic Ocean, West Indies, Mediterranean, etc., destroying many countries and men. Okay? The ocean acquires its actual level in the American continent, its actual shape. The strata become indurated and the soil firm and solid lakes disappear, springs diminish, and streams decrease in bulk. Rains are less heavy, etc. Huge animals ramble over the soil, such as the mammoths, or mastodons, elephants, megalonics, big bears, elks, buffaloes, jaguars, etc. They form licks. Some of them become extinct. Their bones are found at Big Bone Lick, Drennan's Lick, the Ohio Valley, etc. in mud, or alluvi uh, alluvians.
checking out part two, or the historical annals of mankind in Kentucky itself. Now this is funny again because we know that there are Adamites and pre-Adamites, but we have this first chapter of the Adamites and etc. So, the religion, philosophy, geology, history, and tradition combined to teach and prove that mankind was created in Asia. Which Asia? <laughs> Asia Major? Come on, which India Superior? Which one are we talking about? Are we talking about Asia Minor at this time? And that the second cradle of mankind after Noah's flow was also in the lofty lands of Asia, where mountains and peaks from 20,000 to 30,000 feet high over our actual ocean rise among tablelands elevated from 10 to 15,000 feet. The loftiest land tables and mountains of America are much less elevated. So, okay, what we are doing is we're speaking here specifically about Asia and 6 to 22,000 feet at utmost. And they are, besides, entirely volcanic, unfit, therefore, to have been the cradles of mankind. So now we got him right off the bat stating he does not believe that Eden is in America. Okay, So it is evident and positive fact, therefore, that America was populated from the eastern continent in the first instance. So his theory and understanding, even though we have Louis Agassiz coming out, who is a Harvard professor, stating that America was the first to rise out of the ocean, we still have him saying that he believes that it was populated from the eastern continent in the first instance in the first instance he's not speaking about after a certain flood as though there were not already people here but i will state that we know that we have a strong connection with asia look at the uh yucatan the gulf okay there's a strong connection with asia there's no doubt about it we've been speaking of fusain we know this now, in his understanding, the first cradle of mankind was called Eden or Ema, and was the highest land of Asia. The Adamites or Antidiluvians. Again, speaking of the Adamites, where's the pre Adamites? Are you not familiar with them? Were spread over the eastern continent, but we have no positive proofs that they came to America. Uh oh, this is in 1824. Now, as very few, if any, remains have been found that might be ascribed or traced to that previous existence of mankind, I shall not venture, therefore, to offer mere conjectures on that subject. Thank you, we appreciate that. All the American nations can be traced to the second human stock, and need not, therefore, be deemed descendants of the Adamites. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's a kind of big statement. Because again, we know of pre-Adamites. All the American nations can be traced to the second human stock and need not therefore be deemed descendants of the Adamites. The second cradle of mankind has received many names. Diba, Tibet, Maru, Aran, Daras, Ararat, etc. All referring to lofty mountains of Asia. Hmm. Really? I thought Amaru was Amaruka. Okay. I know of where Mount Ararat is here, right within Washington State. Okay. Right next to Mount Tum Tum. If we're getting really honest, right next to Pyramid Creek. All referring to lofty mountains of Asia. Now, Noah, the second parent, monarch, and legislator of mankind, was known to all the ancient nations under many similar names. He is the Nah of the Persians, the Mana of the Hindus the Tanua of the Scythians, the Nina of the Assyrians, the Yorena of the Celts. Noah is the Yorena, Yorenas of the Celts, the Pinon of the Chinese, the Minon of the Armenians, the Akmon of the Atlantis, Akmon of the Atlanteans, the Manu of the Egyptians, the Oanes of the Chaldeans, the Noc or Cox of the Mexicans, the Enoch, Noc or Cox of the Mexicans, the Noc or Mock of the Chiapans, etc. The three sons of Noah. Now you see how they do this. They always related to Noah. This is after, y'all. This is in a storyline of the Adam. Mites, not the pre Adamites. It's different. Why do we not include this? <clears throat> 
The three sons of Noah were also known by many ancient nations under peculiar names. The principal nations of the eastern continent which have contributed to people North America and Kentucky under his assumptions and theories were the Atalans and the Kutans, who came easterly through the Atlantic Ocean, the Istakans and the Ogozians, who came westerly through the Pacific Ocean. Now what's amazing in this regard is that we know that the Toltecs settled Egypt. So if we know this, where are we getting at now in our research? It's getting interesting. So we got a lot of different theories. This is a short book. It's not very big, but still very interesting in relation to what we're finding out, right? So we have chapter two, the Atalans and Catans. The history of these two nations and of their settlements in America may be divided into five periods as follows. Now we'll follow along with what he's trying to bring forth, but he already stated he ain't about the conjecture, so let's see what he's specifically stating and knowing at this point in time before we have history kind of rewrite a lot of the things in which we know about old world America. Now, number one, from the dispersion of mankind to the first discovery of America, including several centuries. Number two, from the discovery of America to the foundation of the Western empires, including some centuries. Now, we know the chronology's messed up, y'all, so we're just going to follow along. Number three, from the foundation of these empires to the Pelagian revolution of nature, including several centuries. Now, what I think is very fascinating is the relation to the Pelagian. This is very important because the Pelagian, so it's amazing here to relate this because we talk about the Hamites are known to have distributed themselves through the north of Africa. And this is in Adamites and pre-Adamites, the Nile Valley, and the east of the continent as far as the Straits of Bal, Bab el Mandeb. They passed from Asia Minor into the southeast of Europe as early as 2500 BC. And you see again how it's related to Asia Minor. We have Asia Major, which is related to more of America. Now, it says that in 2500 BC, and they occupied the peninsula of Greece under the name of the Pelasgians. Okay, did this family belong to the Etruscans, who at a later date migrated from Greece and founded a kingdom in Italy centuries before the building of Rome by another family? Now, the Phoenicians were probably Hamites instead of Semites. Unexpected and truly wonderful evidence of the common origin of these earliest Greeks, early Phoenicians, and early Egyptians have been unearthed by D. Cessnola on the island of Cyprus, where pottery and works of art representing art presenting Egyptian and Phoenician characteristics are mingled with conceptions characteristically Greek. Late researches have shown that the original Chaldean monarchy, also before the 18th century BC, was Hamitic, not Semitic. Okay, so when we started talking about the Pelagian Revolution and the invasion of the Istakan nations, including about 12 centuries, this is serious, bro. Okay, because included in all that is the Etruscans and the Phoenicians. Now, number five, from the Istakan invasion to the decline and fall of the Atalan and Kutan nations in North America, including about 30 centuries to the present time. So we got some serious distance in relation to the ever moment of now and being captured in relation to documentation, artistic works. So under five, we have the first period to the discovery of America, according to him. Now, often after the Nokian revolution of nature, mankind was spread again over the earth from Iran, Aran, Maru, Shinar, or Kashmir, different names given to the highlands of Asia. Okay, so we have Maru being referenced to Asia. Are we speaking of Mount Maru? The first colonies of the primitive nation preferred to reside on mountains. The Mounts Shinar, Shingar, Hima, Leban, Guant, Shinsi, Laos, Altai, Kaf, Arat, Kush, Aral, etc. In Asia, the Mounts Karpath, Himos, Arcade, Apennines, Alps, Pyrenees, etc. In Europe, and the Mounts Atlas, Samin, Tigre, etc in Africa. B. 
became the first abode of nations who gradually spread in the plains, according to his theory. Now, several empires, now, and what it seems to me too is that he is going in a real evolution type state, right? The whole epochs, the biblical account, how man developed from primitive state up to where we are now, right? We, I'm not necessarily with that theory just due to the fact of Atlantis and how great Atlantis was and how we know how far back that actual time span truly goes. Especially when we're reading into the esoteric Gnostic, um, into the esoteric and Gnostic information given within the secret societies such as the Rosicrucians and others. Okay. Now, several empires were successfully established in Hindustan or Bharat, China, Tehran, Persia, Egypt, Abyssinia, etc. Now, where does America fall in that? It doesn't It's like America don't even get a placeholder with the rest, which underwent many revolutions and sometimes attained universal dominion or preponderance. The nations which peopled the western shores of the eastern continent were the Gamerians in Europe and the Atlantis in Africa. So we have the Atlantis in Africa. Why do we have the Atlantis specifically only in Africa? Where is even... Uh, Mu being accounted for in this theory or understanding. It's not, apparently, at this point. The Atlantis formed a powerful empire in North Africa which gave laws to many nations such as the Lahabim or the Libyans and the Futs or the Nathum, the Him, okay, or the Numidians, okay, the original people of Egypt, the Numidians, and even they will tell you this. I know many Egyptians don't play. The Warbers, the Barbers, or the Berbers, the, the Darans, uh-oh, the Jaramans, okay? Garamans, Jaramans, Jaramans, Jamans, the Korans, okay? <laughs> Corinthians, okay? Korans, Korans, and the Quanches, okay? Get it right, etc. In Europe, the Gomerians, Gomerians, divided into many nations. Those that occupied the seashores were first the Pelasgians. Here we go. And who are the Pelasgians? Again, we have to get back to the understanding of what was being said by Winchell in Adamites and Pre-Adamites when he said that the Pelasgians were the first and then under them were the Etruscans, later then formed the Phoenicians. Okay, you guys got to understand this. It's, it's quite clear. It's easy to trace. Now, scattered from Greece to Ireland under the names of the Thyracians in Thracia, Arcadians in Greece, Lestrogons in Sicily, Sinothrians, etc. in Italy. Dubalans in Spain, Juanitans or Henetans in France, Dermorians in Ireland. You hear that? Dermorians in Ireland, in Ireland, etc. Second, the Celts or Paulus, who became Hellens or Yavanas, Yavanas <laughs> in Greece, the Mashakians. Mashikians, Mashak, Mashak, Mashakians, Ossonians or Ombrians in Italy, Sicoles in Sicily, Gauls in France, Hesperians and Gadelians in Spain, Directo, Direct, Directotians in Ireland, in Ireland. Cumrics in Scotland, Fiends or Fenes in England, Fiends, Fins or Fenes in England, etc. Third, the Sakas who became Magas, Magas, Nagas, Sakas, Saxony, okay, in England, Saxons, here we go in Razins in Germany, Etruscans or Tuscans in Italy, Sicanians in Sicily, etc. Fourth, the Garbans who became Cyclopes in Greece and Sicily, the Garbans who became Cyclopes in Greece 
in Sicily, Ligurians in Italy, Catabrians in Spain, Bascans in France, etc. It's great to go through those, right? We have an understanding of what he thinks. All those nations were intimately connected in languages and manners. The Pelasgians were bold navigators and ventured to navigate from Iceland to the Azores in Senegal. Okay? Now, when we talk about the Pelasgians, are we not trying to figure out and understand that the Phoenicians and many others fall under the Pelasgians? Right? There's many branches now that we understand that are under the Pelasgians. So when I refer back to the Pelasgians, I'm referring back to the original headstock parentage lineage in which all other derivatives would come. Correct or incorrect in my assumptions for that. Understanding there is a parent stock is important. The Azores, Madeira, Canary, or Cap Verde Islands were then united in one or more islands called the Atlantic Islands. Notice that we have him here stating that they were called the Atlantic Islands, but nowhere, nowhere is he saying that this was Atlantis which had given the name to the Atlantic coast and were first populated by the Darans and the Korans of Western At Atlantis. Now, Iceland was called Pushkara, okay? Iceland was called Pushkara. That's a big notation here. Iceland was called Pushkara and was not settled owing to the severe climate and awful volcanoes. Numerous revolutions and invasions took place among those nations, until at last the Atlantes of Africa united them all by the conquest in one powerful empire which extended over North Africa, Spain, France, Italy, part of Greece, Asia, etc., and lasted many ages under several dynasties and emperors. United in understanding, even at this time. Now, it was during the splendor of this empire that America was discovered. Uh-oh. Uh oh, to me it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like the chronology's matching up. If we have during the splendor of this empire, America was discovered. Let's continue by some bold navigators who were led by the trade winds to the West Indies, and in a few days from the Atlantic Islands. Who who are we speaking of here? Because we already have an account of Hui Shin and Fu Sang. Now, they called them Antilla Islands. Antilla Islands. When you're searching of Old World America, are we looking up Antilla Islands? Which meant before the land. Before the land. And America was called Atala. And America was called Atala. If you look at Latin, Atolo is elevate. Atala or Great Atlantis. The Great Atlantis. Now we're getting somewhere. We know what's going on. Returning to the Azore land by a northeast course, they extolled the new country and had a great settlement, was soon formed in Ayati. Ayati, or Hayakuta, Haiti, 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 and the neighboring continent by the Atlantis. Now, in the second period to the foundation of empires, the Atalans, or Americans, Atlantis, the Atalans or American Atlantes. Did you hear that? The Atalans. Are we searching Atalans when we're speaking of North America in these old historic accounts? Or the American Atlantes spread themselves through North and South America in the most fertile spots, but the marshy plains of Orino, Maranan, Paraguay, and Mississippi, as well as the volcanoes of Peru, Chile, Quito, and Guatemala, and Anahuac, prevented them from settling those parts 
of the continent. Many of the subjects of the Atlantic Empire, such as the Tubalans, Cantabrians, Cyclops, and the Cuenatans, followed the Atlant Atalans in America and became the Cuatans or Kutan nations. Our research in up Kutan. Kutan. It is very difficult to trace the American nations. Why? Because of their extensive age, y'all. This is very clear. It's why it's always been so difficult. Because we have strata upon strata upon strata when it comes to this great land of America. It's first to rise from the depths of the ocean, Louis Agassiz. Now, it is very difficult to trace the American nations who have sprung from those early settlers. What? Owing to the numerous revolutions and intermixtures. Numerous revolutions and intermixtures which they have undergone. Nor is it my mention to give now a complete genealogy of the Atalan and Kuatan or Kutan nations. I must confine myself to North America or even Kentucky. Now, the Allegheny Mountains were called Loka 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 Okay, now step back from the Allegheny and we're going to start searching up Loka Loka What are we going to find? Beyond them, the country was called the Great White Land Mahaswata Bumi of Hindu or Hindi and it became the seat of a great empire of the Western Atlantic Empire now have we ever heard of the great white land the Mahasweta Bumi of Hindi <laughs> and it became the seat of a great empire or the Western Atlantic Empire this included, of course, Kentucky, but extended from Lake Ontario in the north to the Mississippi. The Atlantic shores called Locuta or La Chacuta were not settled, it says, owing to their arid soil lately emerged from the sea. This western empire may be called the Atalan Empire. Now, this is interesting because we're saying that it reemerged from the sea. Okay, and it was not settled. But what do we know has happened? Strata upon strata upon strata. So we just gonna keep rocking and rolling. We're gonna keep diving and finding out more and more. The deeper we go, the more we understand. Because we're getting to the root, the original. Before things were changed to where we couldn't find out about the original. So I hope y'all enjoying this, this part one. We're going to continue it on. We're going to keep going. And we're going to keep finding the truth that America is the true old world.